Welcome back, awesome people. I'm Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video, we're going to be talking about underscores in the Scala language. So this video is for the curious Scala programmer who's probably seen underscores more times than they find comfortable. So in this video, I'll share almost all of the places that where you might see an underscore so that you don't freak out when you see yet another one in a different context. All right. So as always, I'll recommend that you code alongside me so that you can keep these scenarios on your code editor as well, or whatever you need to refresh your memory, just refer back to this video or to its written form at rockthegvm.com forward slash blog with the link in the description. Now I want to get straight to the point. So I'm going to open my text editor and I'm going to simply create an um, object with potentially a main method in case we want to test something. So let's describe all the situations where we might see an underscore in the Scala language because underscores are so easily abused in the Scala grammar and um, underscores may mean different things in different contexts. So underscores are commonly used where names or values are not important or unused. So the first use case is just ignoring stuff. So here's a pretty much comprehensive list of ignored elements. So I'm going to define, let's say, val underscore equals five. So in this case, you are defining a value whose name you don't really care, whose uh, actual value is five. Now, why you would do that, I have no idea. The point of intentionally declaring a value or a variable is to be able to use it or refer to it by name. But uh, this is possible in the Scala language. Now, this is probably the most useless case of an underscore. However, the case when the compiler throws a value at you that you don't use, uh, then we need an underscore if you want to ignore that name. And the co most common use case is with lambdas whose arguments we don't use. So for example, I'm going to define a value, let's call this only fives, as one to 10 dot map, and if you want to turn every single element into a five, you would say x com, uh, error five, but notice that x is not used, so we might as well put in an underscore here. And uh, if you use any name like x, the compiler will throw um, a little warning at you that you are not using your variable. And so in order to satisfy it, you would use an underscore. Now, this case is useful. The first case, probably not. Now, another scenario is when we use self types for which we have a dedicated video here on the Rock the JVM channel. I'm gonna link to it in the description. And uh, when you don't really need the self type identifier, but you only use self types as a type restriction, you would use an underscore for that. And so I'm going to define a trait, let's call this singer. And I'm going to define another trait Let's call this actor, which by some weird design in your application, this whoever needs to implement this actor trait must also implement the singer trait. And uh, as you probably know, the self types are a good way of enforcing these type constraints. And uh, the way that you will signal that to the compiler is to say self arrow, and then you would use your implementation here. Now, the self name is not really mandatory, you can use any name at all, but if you don't really need the identifier self, which is also an alias for the this reference, you'd simply use an underscore and you would pass in your type that is a type constraint. So I would say singer, for example. So in this case, uh, whoever needs to implement the actor trait must also implement the singer trait. This is what this uh, signal means, but the self identifier is no, not really useful. And so you replace that with an underscore. So uh, this is the third scenario where underscores are useful for ignoring stuff. And finally, one of the less common places where underscores ignore stuff is generic types. So for example, if I define, let's call this process list, which takes a list of options, for example. So I'm going to say list option underscore. You don't really care what kind of elements are in these options, you just pass in whatever, and you would return, for example, an int and say list.length. So notice that this implementation doesn't really depend on what kind of elements these options contain, you just refer to list.length. And this is uh, really useful when you want to, for example, interoperate with Java libraries 
are generic types which were not really explicitly typed, all right? So think pre-Java 5. And uh, whenever you don't really need to reference the element type in uh, inside the generic type, you would simply pass in an underscore, all right? So this was the first scenario, which in fact imposes of four scenarios where you would ignore stuff and replace those with an underscore. Now, underscores are also used to have the meaning of everything, so quote unquote everything, as a wildcard. So um, the first use case is, for example, pattern matching, where the presence of a wildcard matches everything. So I'm going to define a value called meaning of life of type any, so that we can uh, deal with pattern matching here. And uh, let's give this a value 42. And I'm going to add a pattern matching expression like meaning of life match. And in case it matches anything, I will return the string, let's say I'm fine with anything. All right, so when you use underscore here, it means match anything. The second tiny scenario where the underscore means a wildcard or everything is when you import the whole content of a package. So for example, if you import Scala concurrent duration underscore, you import everything. So this is the equivalent of Scala concurrent duration star in the Java language. So import everything. Okay, so this is where the um, underscore actually means a wildcard. Cool. Third scenario that I'm going to talk about is default initializers. Now this is particularly useful for variables when we don't know what to initialize them with. So I would say a var, for example, my variable or my string of type string. And if you don't know what to initialize it with, which is often the case when you define some initial state, you would throw in an underscore here and let the JVM decide what the default value of your type must be. And the default values are zero for numeric types, false for boolean, and null for reference types. So in my case, my string will take the value null if you print it to the console, All right? So underscore here means uh, let the JVM pick the default initializer for the type. Now, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is lambda sugars. Now, you've probably seen this before. Um, let's say we want to multiply every element of a list by five. So you would do something like list one, two, three, four, map x arrow x times five. So this is a proper lambda. But obviously, there has to be an even shorter version than this because Scala compresses basically everything. So uh, I'm going to say list one, two, three, four, map, and I'm going to say underscore times five. So when I say underscore times five, this means the same thing as before. So the compiler expands this very, very short version into the slightly longer lambda version above. So this is identical. The downside is that we can use an underscore only once in this tiny, tiny little body. That's because each underscore usage represents a different argument in the lambda. So for example, if I write a val, let's call this sum function of type int int arrow int. So this is a function taking two ints and returning another one. I could say underscore plus underscore. And um, in this case, each underscore represents a different argument. So this is as I said, as if I said, a b arrow a plus b. So each underscore takes the placeholder of every argument. Now, I understand that this is very, very, very short. Java programmers seeing this for the first time or learning Scala with these kinds of lambdas might find it a little bit too short because Java is really verbose, but it's really, really easy to get used to this kind of function notations. All right. So this was a very common use case for an underscore as a lambda sugar. Now, the fifth use case that I'm going to talk about is ETA expansion, for which we have a dedicated video here on the Rock the JVM channel. I'm going to link to that in the description. So underscores are also used to turn methods into function values. We talk about the process in detail in this other video, but uh, long story short, the um, scenario works like this. If I define a method with a def, and I'm going to say incrementer and this takes an argument, let's say, of type int and returns x plus one. I can turn this method, which belongs to the type 
underscores here, this is my object, then I could say, let's call this incrementer function of type int arrow int. I could say on the right hand side of equals, I could say incrementer underscore. So when I say incrementer underscore, and uh, even if I don't mention the type, the compiler will turn that, this into a function for us. When I say incrementer underscore, the compiler will create a new lambda with the implementation of x arrow incrementer x. But it's obviously shorter to say incrementer underscore because of course it is, right? So when you say incrementer underscore, then that means an eta expanded a method and that is turned into a function. And if you hover over this function, notice that the compiler has automatically uh, derived its type int arrow int. Good. The sixth scenario that I'm going to talk about is higher kinded types. Higher kinded types are generic types whose arguments are themselves generic. So libraries like cats or shapeless use this and exploit this like crazy. And the, the structure of a higher kinded type is of the form Let's define this as a class. I'm going to name this my higher, my higher kind of type. Or let's call this jewel, just because. And uh, this my kind of jewel takes a type argument m that is itself generic. So when you say m underscore here, then that means the type argument here must have a type argument itself. All right. So if I want to instantiate this my higher kind of jewel with a concrete generic type like list, I'll use, for example, val my jewel as new my higher kind of jewel with the type list. So list is generic. I'm not uh, typing this list further with list int or list string. Right. So this is another scenario where uh, the underscore is having a different meaning in the context of the higher kind of type. The seventh scenario is variable arguments methods. So when we have a method taking a variable number of arguments, like I'm going to define a method here, let's call this make sentence with um, words as string star. You know how to define var arg methods with a star at the end of the last argument. I'm going to define that as, I don't know, uh, triple quotes here because I don't really care about the implementation. Now, given a method that looks like this, you might want to call it with make sentence with I love Scala for example, and you can pass in any number of arguments that you like, but you might find yourself with the need to expand some collection of strings as arguments to this method. So for example, you will have a value called words as a list with I love Scala. And uh, you might find yourself in the position of wanting to automatically expand this list into the arguments for this mix sentence var arg method. And there's only one way to do it. And I'm going to say uh, a val called love because we love Scala. I'm going to call the make sentence method with words. And I'm going to use colon underscore star. So this is a particular syntax element to automatically expand a collection such as a list to the var arg uh, argument here of the make sentence method. So this is important. Now granted this uh, application will not run if you call the make sentence method because it's not being implemented. If you if by the way you want to actually use these words as a sequence you would say for example words to seek make string and I would uh, simply pass in a space here to separate them all right so you would say dot to seek to convert this argument list into a simple sequence which you can process as a collection right so um, if I were to print line love I would simply see to the console something like I love Scala which is particularly true 
All right, so I hope this was useful. I hope the underscore presence in your skull code is a little bit less confusing after this video. Now, if you liked it, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe. It helps me a lot. And follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for fresh, fresh updates. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave yours in the comments and uh, check out the Rock the JVM website with lots of content of Scala and Apache Spark and Akka and so many more goodies. I'm Daniel, signing off. <laughs>